Hi guys, welcome to the second lecture as a part of the VHDL lecture series. Today we will try and understand the entity a little better. As part of the first lecture, I explained what is the entity and architecture. Today we'll get to see the entity a little more. And then I will discuss the most commonly used data types, namely the bit, the boolean and the standard or std underscore logic data types. So let's begin. So as part of understanding the entity, we will look at the different data modes that we can specify in the entity. Then we will specify and discuss the three different data types and what type of values that these data types can take. But before I start, I want to discuss a few key terms which we will be regularly using. First is the term assigned. If I have a variable or signal x and I have another variable or signal y, if I give the value from y to x, then typically I say that x is assigned the value of y. So please understand that. The second is read or reading a value. If x is getting the value of y, I say that x is reading the value or if y is getting it from z, then I say y is reading the value of z. So when you take a value, then it is typically called a read when you give a value, then it is typically called a write. And then we have something called as a driver. A driver is a signal or port that gives a logic value, logic value as in zero or one or a particular type of value to a signal or a port, the person giving this value, the person giving this value is typically called the driver. Person who gives the value is called the driver. I hope these three terms, we'll be using these three terms quite regularly. Hence, I just thought that, you know, I'll discuss these terms before we move on. So now, as part of knowing the entity a little better, we'll understand what are the different modes. We had seen previously that I had said that in the half adder, I had X and Y or A and B of the type in. So on the other hand, I had sum and carry of the type out. This is what I meant is that the mode needs to be specified and mode indicates whether or not this particular port that is A or B can be read from the entity or not. So if it's of the type input then yes I can read from A and B but if it's of the type output I cannot read from sum and carry but I can only right into it. So let's let's take a closer look at this. The signal also specifies, as I said, the direction of the driver, like what is the direction in which the person who is giving the value. So let's look at these in a little more detail. The most commonly used ones are in and out. This is less frequently used and this is least frequently used. Hence our focus as part of this course will be mostly understanding the mode in and mode out and maybe a few times we will look at in out. So in the mode in the example is fairly simple that these are my keywords entity driver is then I have the keyword port I specify the pin or the port first this is the mode of the type input and this is the data type which we'll look at as a part of this lecture itself. 
Now that said, if it's of the type input or in, the driver or the person giving the signal is outside the entity. So only a person from the outside can give a value from this. The person sitting on the inside of the entity can only read. You can only read from the port, but you cannot write. Hence, this statement is the driver resides outside the entity. Hence, the person sitting on the inside or the signal sitting on the inside can only read from the port. I hope that is clear. Similarly, the type mode out, again, the syntax is fairly clear. The driver resides inside the entity. So the person sitting inside or the signal sitting inside can write the value to the output but you cannot read the value. You cannot read the value from the output. You can only write the value because again, it's an output port. So you can only write into the output port. You cannot read from the output port. Well, then your question is, when can I read from the output port? That is when I use the mode in out. In out typically means that you have the right to place a driver on the outside and on the inside. So you can read the signal from inside and you can drive it from the outside. But I would like to let the viewer know that using an in-out type of port is a little tricky and not very straightforward. Hence, if you choose to model something like an in-out, I would suggest using, using an individual in and out and then as a part of your architecture, you functionally make it of the type in-out. We will discuss that in a future lecture. So I hope that these three modes were clear. I have decided not to discuss the buffer type because it's a little more complex. And when you're starting out to learn VHDL, it's not really that important to know the buffer signal or the buffer mode, I'm sorry. So now let's understand the data types. We saw in the previous lecture and in the current lecture that we have the mode or the port. This was the mode and this was the data type. So what I'm trying to say is I have a port A which is of mode in input and has the data type bit. What I'm trying to say is, or what VHDL says, is this input can take only the values which this data type covers, which is 0 and 1. So this port A cannot take any other values apart from 0 and 1. Fairly straightforward. Well, you must be wondering that if it's a digital circuit, I don't have any other values apart from 0 and 1, right? That's the question that must have come to your mind. Give me a couple of minutes and I'll answer that question. Boolean, on the other hand, has two values, true and false. So again, it is close to a programming language. Boolean is less frequently used. But nonetheless, it is used that if you have two states, which is true and false, then you would use the type Boolean. The most commonly used is the STD or standard underscore logic. 
it is defined as a part of the standard underscore logic underscore 1164 package. Remember in my previous lecture I said that we could define our own package with our own data types. Similarly, the IEEE designed its own package which is the standard underscore logic underscore 1164 package which says that if I have a terminal A which is of the type input or B of the type output and I assign it a data type of standard underscore logic then A or B can take all these nine values which is it could be uninitialized means I have not given it an initial value it could be unknown that in this point of time I don't know the value it could be the traditional logic 0 it could be the traditional logic 1 it could be high impedance I would like to spend two minutes discussing high impedance now when you say that you have a logic 0 if it's a logic 0 at the output that means that you are trying to take in current that you are sinking current and if the output is 1 you are sourcing current means you are giving current again this is in terms of current when I say it's high impedance high impedance means that it is neither sourcing nor sinking there is no current there is no current and that's what it means by high impedance and then you have low logic 0 and low logic 1 again it's less frequently used and then you have don't care and that said the most commonly used values are these three u and x uninitialized or unknown is purely for simulation purpose that is when you want to simulate your design and not actually implement it just simulation that's when you would look at uninitialized and unknown so as you see that std underscore logic covers the most realistic forms of values you have logic 0 logic 1 high impedance just want to quickly cover low logic 0 and low logic 1 a logic 0 means 0 volts a logic 1 means high for example 5 volts or maybe 3.3 volts so a low logic 0 would mean something above 0 volts so let's say 0 0.3 volts or 0 four volts not exactly zero volts and a low logic one would mean something like 4.5 volts or 4.2 volts with respect to 5 volts or 3 volts or 2.8 volts with respect to 3.3 volts so these are also realistic situations but very rarely used if you are using an FPGA then you do have 0, 1 and high impedance. So I hope this lecture on understanding the entity better, on looking at the different modes that is the in, out and in, out and then looking at the data types that is the bit, boolean and standard logic. We'll be using this data type very often so get used to seeing this. So thank you for spending time. I shall see you in the next lecture.